What's up everyone? It's Rayvon from Love Lola. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is interface your handle piece. <clears throat> I recommend using something like Sofuse Plus or Emmeline Heavy. If you don't have one of those, SF101 or Deck of the Light. If you don't have any of those, um, SF101 is also a good option, but you would need to interface it twice. So you would cut two pieces of SF101 if you're going to be using that. Now, we are folding this piece of material. So for my Mabel, I cut my strap piece 12 inches long by 4 inches high. And we are going to be folding this piece in half. And again, so it's going to be four layers of material fabric that you're going to be sewing through. So with that being said, when you cut your interface and you want to make sure that you keep it out of your seam allowance. So you want to make sure that you're leaving at least one fourth of an inch along the long sides and also the short sides, just so that we're not bulking it up too much for our machines. So first thing, go ahead and get that interfaced. Another option is later when we go about adding our stabilizer. If you want to, you can add your stabilizer before you interface it to help it stay still and not move around. I do that sometimes too. For the sake of this video today, I am not going to. Or maybe I will. Who knows? Now I will say at 12 inches, my handle does hang over the edge of my flap just a little bit because I, I just like the way that looks. So please take that into consideration. If you don't want your um, handle to hang off of the end, then go ahead and make your handle a little bit shorter. Okay? This is just my preference. You see that? Yeah. It hangs just a little bit over the sod. Okay. So anyway, with that being said, you see how we have this little piece for adding our swivel hook for our hook. That little piece is kind of thin. The spaces on those triangle connectors are are not, you know, they're they're not that big. So with that being said, if I know that I'm going to be using a connector like this, I make sure that I keep my stabilizer cut short enough so that I can slide this up as long as I need it. And this winds up sliding up one inch the way that I do mine. So I make sure that I have at least one inch seam allowance on the longer sides. Now, if you're using a regular um, D-ring connector, it doesn't matter. It's going to fit. So you don't have to worry about that. You can keep that stabilizer all the way to, you know, up to one fourth of an inch from those sides. So it just depends what you're making or what you're using. Okay. Since I have it out, I am going to go ahead and use this before I do my stabilizer. So we want to grab a ruler. An erasable marker and we're going to draw a line halfway down the center of this so at the two inch mark and then I'm going to draw another line one inch down or one inch up you know whichever side you're coming from it doesn't matter and what you want to do is place that stabilizer piece that you cut and I cut my stabilizer pieces one half inch wide because we don't want it to get in that seam allowance and that's going to be too bulky so I cut it only one inch high okay and once you have your stabilizer placed if you're going to be doing your in doing it before you're interfacing you just go ahead and place your interfacing over it 
and then get that ironed on. Okay, once you have your interfacing done, you're simply going to bend in towards that middle line, or you're gonna fold it over towards that middle line. Now, when you fold it in to that middle line, don't fold it all the way so that they're touching. Leave just a little, little bit of space in between that middle point so that your handle doesn't start to, you know, twist up a little bit. Because when it's all the way there and you bend it again, it starts to get too bunched up. So it will distort it. So just make sure when you're bending those in towards each other, I'm talking about this, these two pieces. You don't want them to touch. You want there to be a slight gap in between there. All right, and then you're just gonna simply fold it over like we do our typical, I need my big clamps. Like you would do for a strap. I know you're gonna be like, where'd you get those clamps? I got it from Amazon. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link down below. They're great when you're dealing with, you know, super thick material. They're fantastic. I got sick of breaking these, you know, when I'm trying to make it fit. And pop, you know what I'm talking about. And then I have to go buy another pack. Okay, once we have this clamped, we're gonna go and we're just gonna sew around the entire thing. I like to start my top stitching at the very end here in the midpoint and I also like to sew along the side that's bent before I sew along the side that is where the ends meet okay so I like to sew this side first I just feel like it helps with the distorting I've noticed on my straps I guess because you know sometimes if you did Put your fabric too close together to the middle or whatever any kind of shifting or something happened if it's not perfect when you sew this side the open side closed first the material isn't able to adjust and move around like it may need to to keep your strap or your handle smooth but if you sew this side closed first if there's any kind of if anything's off it's going to be able to work itself out on this side because it's still open so you can you know let it do what it needs to do to naturally be smooth that's just me so yeah so start at the end at the halfway mark go towards that end that is um, open and then all the way around and we're going to be doing this at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance if you decide that you don't want to add your stabilizer before you do your interfacing or you forget to add it before you do your interfacing no problem you can just place it on it after you've interfaced it and still place it in between that mark that we made earlier and fold it over and it should stay in place I've done it like that and I don't have any issue with it moving around <clears throat> if you feel like you might just grab some kind of fabric glue or um, double-sided tape mm, double-sided tape doesn't work that well with stabilizer but just something and you can um, get that adhered on if you don't want it to move and then just proceed to do the same thing we did earlier okay <clears throat> let's get this sewn together today I am using my super cool table from I believe it's relic designs if you have a industrial machine this is a must-have it is a game changer let me tell you what I am not affiliated with them. I don't get anything for saying this. It just really changed my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotta turn your machine on, right? It's not gonna work, duh. Okay. We're gonna do that little back stitch, of course. I am at about a four and a half stitch length on my, this is a industrial machine, a Yamata 1341 cylinder arm. <laughs> I absolutely love this top stitching table. <sighs> Look at me. I didn't listen to my own advice. I'm sewing on the side that's open. And it's already pulling a little bit. Golly, Ray. It's okay. 
it's okay I'll just release my tension a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't start to twist mm -hmm. but yeah this top stitching table is so good you can adjust it to one eighth of an inch seam allowance one fourth three eighth half of an inch whatever you need it has really changed the game for me so yeah definitely recommend nine ten out of ten ten out of ten recommend <laughs> Mm -hmm. but yeah see how it's doing that it has a little bit of a twist not much nothing to cry about it's going to be okay because it's so stiff once we get it added to the bag you're not even gonna it's not gonna be noticeable but if we if i had done it the other way then it's more likely to not have done that because it would have been able to adjust anyway let's keep going Okay, so I am going to go ahead and get my strap ends put on because I am just not in the mood to edge coat. Oh, man. Dang it, boy. Find which side looks the best because some of us, we always have a... I know on my domestic, my top side always looked better than my bottom. With the industry, industrial machine, it doesn't really matter. They always look the same. But anyway, yeah, if you have a favorite side, pick that side. <clears throat> now, if you're using one of the triangle um, connectors like I am, you're going to need to get that put on before you add your strap in. So just go ahead and slide it on. It's going to go to about where the stabilizer is added. Naturally, it's going to stop because it's kind of thick right there. And then get your end piece put on. And then you can go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Now make sure that you put your end facing up on the same. Make sure that the same side of your end is facing up as the other side. You don't want to accidentally do that <laughs> ask me how I know not a big deal you can always take it off but save yourself the time and just make a note of it all right once you've got those on we can go ahead and get these attached to the bag I will be using the size large rivets, I believe. Let me check and make sure. Because I'm going to be using what I got. <laughs> Hopefully I have large. Because I used large on my other one and I thought that it was perfect. Well, actually, I, uh, I can do medium. I have large and medium. I'm going to check it out. So what I like to do, I don't measure it. I just kind of eyeball it. But I place it and check it out and see if it looks good and it looks good I know that it's generally about an inch from the edge I never measure but let me measure for video's sake you know I use my cute little new tiny ruler that my daughter broke into three pieces and now I have a whatever okay um so Okay, so I'm going to use this bag, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to use this bag for reference and get you some measurements. This hole, I placed it 
three fourth of an inch from the edge of my strap in. Yep, three fourth of an inch is where I put the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that now on my strap. <laughs> One, why am I struggling today? Here we go. One, two, three fourth inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and center it as well. I'll make a mark. So three fourth inch in and one half inch in that way. Repeat it on the other side. Okay. And then on the bag, I placed it, I'm gonna be using four rivets, not two, four. I made the hole, <clears throat> excuse me. It is one, two, three. It's three eighths inch in from the side of the bag, the flap. So three eighth inches in from this side. And then I placed it I placed it about one and a half inch up from the back of the bag. So from the back of the bag, I went up one and a half inch and in. So three eighth of an inch in from the side. Right there. And one and a half inch in from the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. One and a half. You can actually do, I like to position it where it's a little bit closer to the back than the front. So you don't have to measure it, just get it where it's closer to the back than the front. So right now I'm gonna do one and one, two. I'm gonna place it at about one and three eighth of an inch from the back and three eighth of an inch from the, ins from the side. So right there. As long as you make it even on both sides, you're good to go. <laughs> Okay, once I've got them all marked, I'm gonna go ahead and get those hope, holes punched on everything. <clears throat> now, I haven't punched the holes for the inside part of my handle yet, but you certainly could. I'll go ahead and give you the measurements now in case you would like to do that. I generally wait until I get my handle attached and then I just fold down and put it underneath my thing and clamp it. But, you know, <clears throat> it makes sense to do it all at the same time. So I'll go ahead and get a measurement for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we're going to be punching our second hole about three-fourths of an inch from the first hole. Maybe a tad, yeah, three-fourths of an inch. Perhaps a tad bit more than three-fourths of an inch, but three-fourths of an inch is cool. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Just gonna slide that um, triangle, triangle connector out of the way. And I'm gonna measure down three-fourths of an inch. One, two, three. One, two, three. Same thing on our bag. You wanna make sure that you're not twisting this, okay? So use your ruler to make sure that this second hole is gonna be the exact same distance from the back as the front because you don't want your your um your handle to get you know all wonky. What do we say, three fourth inch? <clears throat> Push it down flat so you can get a good measurement. One, 
two three fourth inch okay once we've got all of our holes cut out we're just gonna go ahead and get get it attached I'm using medium another trick that you're probably probably noticing is adding the handle at the end when I first started making these I would make do my handle um, in an earlier step and then at the end and then when we had to sew the lining you know attach the lining to the bag it was uh, it was a fight it was a struggle to get that but when you do it like this you don't have to worry about any of that so definitely a nice trick to make your life easier is to add your handle at the very end and that's if you're using rivets if you're gonna attach it with thread then obviously you don't want to do that because you don't want that thread to show on the inside of your bag but if you're gonna rivet it yes wait till the end okay and now we're gonna just get those secured move your triangle out of the way when you're doing this have a look at your handle make sure that everything is kind of lined up the way that it needs to be move it out of the way all right and there you go you have got yourself a nice sturdy handle it's not gonna move okay <laughs> you don't have to be you don't have to worry about somebody going to grab it and it's all loosey-goosey it's it's there it's good okay there you, there you go it's nice and sturdy uh, you can hear me hitting it it ain't moving it's good so yeah step up your game and make yourself some nice professional sturdy handles it really will take your bag up a notch <laughs>